But what exactly OpenGL is and how we can use it? First of all, it's an API, a set of callable C functions. It's a state machine and it follows the client-server model. You talk to the system by calling its functions and setting up its state to run the rendering. OpenGL is a state machine. This means that OpenGL machine has its internal memory state called the context. OpenGL context keeps current global settings, like rendering options that could be enabled or disabled, the current set of buffers, for example loaded raster images for textures, or arrays of geometry, usually in the form of vertices coordinates, current shaders, and so on. OpenGL follows the client-server model. This means that to prepare everything for drawing, we set up the OpenGL state by calling the API functions. We ask OpenGL to take the input data and render the output state to an actual pixels on a screen or in a frame buffer in terms of OpenGL. The API itself is just a set of plain C functions you have to call. You will be calling many many C functions like this one on the slide to set up the OpenGL state and to render the scene into the frame buffer. Conceptually, the workflow looks like this. We provide OpenGL with the geometry, like coordinates for our triangles, texture data and light sources, and ask it to draw this scene. You can think about it in terms of so-called photo table metaphor. When you prepare a scene for photo shooting, you place some objects on very specific positions to form a composition. You set up lights, and then you take a photo shoot to get a resulting picture. OpenGL has several stages of setup. It's called the pipeline. On the first conceptual stage, you supply the geometry, the vertex buffers filled with data like their coordinates and colors. Then you ask OpenGL to form a specific set of primitives from this geometry, usually triangles, but OpenGL supports some other ways. Then OpenGL rasterizes the triangles to actual set of pixels on the screen, so-called fragments, and performs the shading operation on each individual pixel to find out its color. You can write your own little programs called shaders to run them for each pixel and fill it with desired color. Shaders are used in 3D light intensity calculations, but there are many other neat ways to use them, like raster effects, for example blur or glow. On the final stage of pipeline, we can use multiple render passes to blend together a final image frame to display it on screen. Let's talk about screen coordinates. In the end, OpenGL uses so-called normalized device coordinates. As you can see, the whole area of the screen is fit within minus one to one rectangle. This is completely logical unit of measure. It's not aware of the actual pixel dimensions of the device screen. Still, it is possible to make an accurate pixel-perfect screen coordinate system in OpenGL. We'll do it later in the transformations section. To summarize, OpenGL is a set of functions we use to set up the scene and render it. It is cross-platform C-based API. However, OpenGL doesn't handle Windows. All it cares about is rendering. So, for each platform like iOS or Windows, you would need a platform-specific code bindings to the display system or windowing system. Also, you could use a universal library like GLAD or GLFW that hides this complexity and gives you a working environment. Alright, let's get busy and do some coding.